clingy, 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 clingy. Ooh, a lot of hardware there. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Small Talk Tuesday. I am your host, Jennifer Razan, and suffice to say, I have survived the LA Marathon. Woo! Yes! Um, yeah, it, it is the day after the marathon and, um, it's just, I'm still processing the whole, the whole weekend, really. It's pretty much been a blur, amazing blur, to be honest. And just sitting here now, um, in recovery mode, um, yeah, today has been just, you know, mixed of emotions, to, to be honest. It's like, what... Waking up, not going outside to prepare for a run. Um, just, you know, I slept in a little bit um, just to help me rest yesterday. Because as anyone knows who you ran marathon, you're going to wake up before the crack of dawn. Uh, like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes even earlier for some people. And just getting ready, making sure you're you know at the location that you need to start at. It's, it's just a whole plethora of things that we'll get, we'll get into uh, a little bit later but uh, what can I say it's 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 been a tremendous journey you know I've been training four months for this and just to have it all come together and finished in just a few hours it's it's an amazing thing it's it's kind of like you know having worked in the movie and tv industry for 20 years you know, you work on a project for so many years, or really any project in whatever field you're working on, you know, you're assigned to something for a certain amount of time, you work on it, and that presentation is just done in a blink of an eye. So it's very much like that for marathon training. We put ourselves through an intense training block, and then, you know, we're out there on the road, taking in the vibes of the energy right at that moment. And then you cross that finish line and you come down from that high. And then, you know, it's going to, well, for me at least, it hits much later that <laughs> you kind of go thinking, okay, what now? It's, it's like you're almost at a loss for words. Has anyone felt like that? Let me know in the comments if you've felt like that somewhat. Yeah, I'm still processing it, but I loved every moment of it. Um, you know, I didn't quite finish at the time I wanted, but that's not really what mattered. And what really did matter was that I was running for a purpose. And um, that is something that we'll also talk about later in the podcast. All right, so let's get into this race weekend, this final weekend of the marathon that we've been preparing for. So... Um, this past Friday was actually the start of the expo, and I usually like to get my bibs and whatever extra stuff that I need at least the day before, or like early the day before, or you know, whenever the the expo starts. So I picked up my bib uh, roughly Friday morning, shortly after they opened, probably like an hour after they opened, and there was actually a lot of people already. I, it was at Dodger Stadium. So I got my 5K bib and my marathon bib, uh, followed by getting the gear check bag for the marathon. If you're not familiar with gear check bags, they're pretty much essentially like clear plastic bags that you put your bib number on, um, where you could put your extra stuff that you need right after the marathon. So for me, I put some slippers in there, um, some KT tape just in case I needed it, um, extra sunblock or whatnot a spare socks or t-shirt so small things here and there just to help you feel a little more comfortable right after crossing that finish line so got that and then walked around the expo just a little bit see what small things that they have there or which vendors weren't around um i did get me the green i was talking about i got myself a nice green hat that i wore um, you're, I'm sure you're all familiar if you're watching my, uh, training vlogs that I've worn a 
grayish, no, dark grayish hats for all my training. So for the marathon, I swapped it out with a brand new spanking green hat. So that will be my, you know, new training hat from this on forward until the next new hat or whichever I decide in the rotation of <laughs> running hats that I have. But it was a good swap out. Um, it felt comfortable, which is cool. Um, I also got myself a pair of new socks um, that was familiar actually to what I've been training with. So I wasn't too worried about, you know, my feet not being comfortable while I was in my shoes. So I, I wore green socks. So I, I was decked out in the green um, color. So for it to be uh, St. Paddy's Day, um, you know, you got you got to. You got to rep somehow, I guess. But yeah, and after that, just walked around the expo for a bit. Got got some freebies. Um, a lot of electrolyte drinks. Um, tasted a few samples here and there. You know, just checking out what's new. Um, seeing all the machineries that they're, you know, showing off during there. But I didn't stay too long. I wanted to rest as much as possible for the weekend because I knew, you know, any more energy that I would expend would you know be depleting my energy levels for the marathon so i did that went home um did my first carbo load meal uh for the marathon my tradition um for the past two marathons that i did was have my carbo load meal at the cheesecake factory and so for the third time i went to the cheesecake factory and had myself my fettuccine alfredo. So I had that. Um, and, um, you know, I just wanted to keep that little tradition alive in terms of <laughs> how I've done things before. So it was enjoyable. Um, you know, had their amazing brown bread that everybody loves. And, um, yeah, had a had their lunch portion, which is actually just perfect to fill me, enough, fill me up enough to where, you know, I wasn't too full. Um, and we know that feeling for you too much. You kind of feel like, well, afterwards. But this one was just enough to, to hold me over to the next day, which, you know, I ended up having a little bit more carbs just to replenish that. So, but that night I just, you know, relaxed, put my gear together for the uh, 5K, which was the following day on Saturday. And then, of course, uh, in the evening before, prep my electrolyte meal plus... Um, whatever I'm going to eat, which is like an English muffin, but I usually have, and the salt tabs. And then, of course, you know, I just went to bed in my normal time. I'm not too worried about getting, you know, the whole full seven, eight hours. Uh, if it's just 5Ks, I'm not too worried about those. It's usually for the half marathons and marathons that I would be more worried about getting the proper amount of rest. then comes Saturday. It's the day of the LA Big 5K, um, which is the uh, final race of the Triple 5K Challenge. Um, I got to the stadium, Dodger Stadium, um, at about, I want to say 7 o'clock around there. But there was a bit of traffic trying to get to the stadium. It's a uh, a bit ridiculous half the time in terms of you know the flow of traffic and whatnot. But I did manage to get there. Uh, with 30 minutes to spare, well, not th about 30 to 40 minutes to spare um, to, you know, use the porta potties if I needed to, and then um, to warm up, and of course, just to get my bearings in terms of uh, which seated corral I'm going to um, start in. So, luckily, um, you know, there's still a lot of people still coming in and whatnot, so I was you know, almost afraid I was going to miss the starting line. We did start at 8 a.m. I believe the elite runners ran a little bit before that, but um, majority of the general runners started at 8. So I ended up going into, I want to say the D Corral. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I did. I went to the D Corral, um, stood there with everybody else, and just waited I did feel pretty good. I warmed up probably just for a good f five minutes. I didn't want to warm up too much because during my runs, I usually end up warming up more within the first mile. So um, I was worried coming into this weekend about my knee still. Um, if you watched my vlogs, 
Um, I had injured it slightly a few weeks before. I believe it was during week 16. No, no, 15 that I had injured it a bit. Um, so that was, that was something that was in the back of my mind quite a bit, um, even though it was feeling all right leading up to that weekend. But yeah, overall, the, the 5K did pretty well. My knee was all right. I didn't feel anything whatsoever. I kept it at a slow pace on purpose. Um, I did consider the 5K to be my shakeout run for before the marathon. Um, it is okay to run the day before, just not necessarily at a you know higher um, pace mileage or higher pace that you would normally do if you were running like a marathon or half marathon. So this is my checkout run, easy pace all around. So I wasn't too worried. So I did finish the LA Big 5K in 40 minutes and one second. Um, so I didn't beat my Rose Bowl time, which I knew wasn't going to happen because I was, I was going slow on purpose. So um, but yeah, it was a good time. I mean, uh, it's not too bad in terms of my pacing which I believe was a 12.53, so it's not too bad. And, um, you know, I still finished within the middle of the overall pack, so it was good. And the weather was awesome, actually. So um, we did have some breeze out there. Sunshine did come out, and um, we started off all pretty well. So, yeah, I mean, the 5K, um, I would totally do that one again. I love that one. Actually, 5Ks are always fun to run, Um and, you know, if you're able to do one, do it. You know, you can walk it as well. So anybody can do it. So it's very, I much consider 5Ks more like the uh, fun runs because you have all ages participating in that. And it's cool to see families out there just joining in on the fun. So if you ever get a chance, do go for a 5K because, you know, you'll meet a lot of people um, just randomly chatting with you at the start line. And, of course, you know, all the fun and the good vibes all around. So... Yeah, five Ks all around. Whoop whoop whoop. High five to you guys. Um, oh, and for that one, we did. I since I finished that one, we did get uh, a pretty cool medal. It's like a. It looks like a number five on it, with Dodger Stadium um, like design on it. And with their, um, if you've ever been to Dodger Stadium, they have like a kind of like a marquee billboard where the scoreboard is kind of, and they have that as kind of like the big 5K finisher. So um, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is what it looks like. Right there, the middle. It's pretty neat. I actually like the design this year. So it uh, has the LA Big 5K on there. It's pretty awesome. And, of course, um, I did complete the triple 5K, meaning I did the Santa Monica Classic 5K, the Rose Bowl 5K, and then the LA Big 5K. So I got a special medal after completing um, the 5K or Saturday's race. Uh, with that is the triple 5K Tour of LA medal. Um, it's pretty neat because this one actually, it spins. Hold on. I'm trying to hold this up properly here so I could... Ooh. It spins. See? That's pretty cool. <laughs> and in the back, it's got, you know, the the three races that you completed to earn that medal. So, yeah, that's that's, that's a pretty neat medal. It's like a little, little bonus one. And then, of course, you know, after crossing that finish line, you got the uh, post-race snacks. Um... They did have quite a few good ones um, again this year. Um, some electrolyte, electrolyte drinks. Um, what I really actually liked is the Pocky uh, snacks that they gave out. They actually had the cookies and cream flavor there this year. Now, I didn't stay too long um, at the stadium. I just wanted to get home and rest as much as possible for the marathon because we all know that'll take a lot more energy um, than needed. So I pretty much left probably within 15, 20 minutes after, um, crossing the finish line and just, you know, rested for a little bit, just making sure I'm okay. Um, and then prepared my, uh, gear for what I was going to bring for the marathon. 
Um, for that, I, you know, laid out all the stuff that I need. So for my shirt, I use my LA Big 5K shirt to run in. Um, I use my Brooks running shorts that I've been um, training in for, you know, several months. So those ones I was comfortable with. So, And the new green socks that I got from the expo uh, will be the socks that I would be wearing for the race. And of course, my running shoes, my tried and true running shoes that I had been training in for four months. Um, I did not do a long sleeve base layer because I knew I was going to get hot during the marathon. So I ended up just um, bringing or wearing with me, at least for the first few miles, um, some arm sleeves. I have some black arm sleeves that I've had for quite a while. And they're very helpful in terms of rather than wearing multiple layers, um, just wearing the arm sleeves and just taking it off and putting it in my pocket when I don't need to. So that's one thing that I usually do if I know it's going to be hot later in the race. Um, in terms of outerwear, um, I did bring my neck buff, uh, my gaiter that I've been wearing during my training. Uh, I usually wear that just to protect my neck from being too exposed from the sun. Also, it helps to me to wick off any sweat and salt from my face that would... Um, you know, hinder me from, you know, seeing properly. And then, of course, preparing my bib, uh, my running watch. Uh, I, rec I recorded it on my Garmin uh, watch, which has been the watch I've d used in my past, all my past races, actually, and it's been doing me pretty well. So uh, I recorded my run on that and um, trying to remember what other gear that I have in terms of clothing. I think that's it. And then, and of course, my new hat. My new brand spanking green hat. Um, so that's it for the clothing um, that I would be wearing. Um, now for the additional gear being my hydration vest. Um, I knew there was going to be hydration stations um, throughout the whole route. So I did not fill my vest up all the way because I'd be getting you know, electrolyte drinks and waters from um, the stations along the route. So I just needed the hydration vest as kind of a backup. So if they didn't have any, you know, hydration whatsoever in between the stations, I have something to sip on. Like I, I, I used it a few times, especially uh, when I was taking my gels. So that really helped a lot in terms of getting all that down. Um, I brought with me six gels, three, I know, four of the regular Martin 100s and two of the caffeine uh, 100 gels. So I used those intermittently. So I had the regular and then followed by the um, caffeine and then two regulars and then another caffeine and then the final regular. So I ended up using all six. Um, during the race, so that really helped me a lot. Before the race, I did have um, three of the Cliff Energy Chews just to get me started, um, especially in the first few miles, so I had those. I did bring my um, Rice Krispie Treat, but I did not end up eating it. Um, I had quite a bit of snacks during the race, so I had no need for the Rice Krispie Treat, but um, it's still in the pocket. Actually, I haven't I haven't removed it from the pocket. It's still there. Um, <laughs> I also brought my uh, Himalaya salt candies. Um, I had those um, with me just in case I needed more electrolytes. But I I drank so much of the electrolyte drinks at the hydration stations that I had no need to actually take a salt candy. I did have one um, before the race, um, before I left my house for the race, just to also get me going in the morning. So that was really helpful. So I prepared all that the night before, laid it all out, um, set it by my door, so that way I'm not forgetting it, um, you know, as I head out. And also prepared my gear check bag, which I had my slippers, um, I did have a towel in there to wipe off my face or sweat. Um, some extra sunscreen, um, my KT tape, 
Um, a few small miscellaneous, th- miscellaneous things I thought that I may need, and of course my recovery slippers because I wanted to switch out of my shoes right away once I crossed that finish line. So, and then you know for the rest of the day, um, I had a small carb carbo load meal um, to replenish the carbs that I had from the previous day. So I had a bit of like corned beef hash with some bread. So got more carbs in, got my protein in. And um, just really rested as much as possible um, for the rest of that night. I did manage to get to bed between, I want to say, 8.30 to 9. And surprisingly, I did get some sleep. Um, Although my body kept waking me up every hour and a half to two hours. Because, you know, if you like, I don't know if anybody there's like this, but when I know I have to be somewhere at a certain time or I know how I have to wake up definitely at a certain time it's like my body is is like testing me going I'm just making sure you're paying attention you're gonna wake up at this hour but you're not really gonna be you know ready just yet it's like I'm not ready just yet so I'm gonna test you to wake up at this hour but then you can go back to sleep it's like your anxiety is kicking in it's like nope no not yet not yet not yet I'm just testing you (laughs) jokes on you um so, no, I, I would say that I, I got a good amount of rest that night. It's one of those things where, actually, I really enjoyed it quite a bit. And I normally don't. So, um, very appreciative of my body for letting me rest for that night. Um, just making sure I was really well rested and just not too stressed out. But it felt pretty good. And now on to Sunday, 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 uh, race day. Um, that was the day everyone's been anticipating, the day we've been working up to. And it's just the fact that I'm now, you know, we're now talking about it in the past tense. It's like we've been building up to it, talking about it, you know, promoting it as much as possible. And now it's gone and you're like, wow, that went by quick. It really went by quick. Um, So I woke up um, around four, a little bit before a clock, a little bit before four. My body tends to wake up before my alarm clock always, no matter what. So I would say about 3.55, finally woke up. And um, I knew I was going to try to get to the shuttles um, at Union Station to get me to Dodger Stadium by 5.30. So I gave myself a good hour just to, you know, get up, get ready, and do a little stretching here and there to get my mind really fully active for the day. Um, so that helped me prepare quite a bit. Um, I did have a little bit of breakfast that morning. Um, my final uh, English muffin that I had plus um, an electrolyte drink to help me get energized for the morning and a salt candy. So that's what I consisted of for that morning. I try not to eat too much um, before any kind of race because it usually messes with my stomach. So I didn't want to risk it in terms of putting too much in. But it worked out well. So, um, you know, that's something I'll probably keep doing um, for how I did it this time around. Um, I took the Uber to Union Station around 5 and ended up arriving around 5.20, I want to say. And there's plenty of runners already there trying to get situated into the shuttles, um, which is, I'm actually really glad I took decided to take the shuttles because seeing the traffic just trying to get into the stadium of people who actually drove to the stadium was, even the shuttles trying to get in took a little bit just sitting there just to, manage their way through but yeah there was so many people I think from what I hear is about 20,000 plus people who ran this year which is crazy to think so um but I also read somewhere it's like somewhere close to 26,000 so I don't know which number is which but it's still a huge number um <laughs> uh the shuttle I was in um arrived at the stadium around a little bit past 7 a.m. Oh, no, no, sorry. A little past 6 a.m. Um, we arrived at the stadium. 
which gave me enough time to head to the gear check trucks um, to get my bag there and then head to the porta potties to, you know, clear out the bladder. Because uh, it's usually the best thing you could do. The last thing you want to do is, uh, you know, wait in the porta potty lines on the route and you're trying to like, if you're, you want to try to beat your time, it's like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so yeah, got there, um, warmed up quite a bit. Um, I had a jacket with me for the mornings. I knew it was going to be super cold. So I just stuffed that jacket in my gear check bag before I checked it in. It wasn't surprisingly too cold when I got there. Um, I thought it was going to be colder, but I think that's because I was surrounded by so many people that a lot of our body warmths were just like surrounding each other. I ended up going at the, between the 11 minute and 12 minute mile corrals towards the, um, the open areas. So that's where I was standing, um, at the start. And it took us quite a bit to get to the, the start line because there's so many people. So I think probably maybe a good five to 10 minutes before we actually officially crossed. I know the elite runners started, I think 15 minutes before us. And then we had to wait, um, the general um, pool um, had to wait until seven to actually officially start. So um, that's how it went um, for for that morning. So I technically didn't cross the start line until probably about between 7.10 to 7.15 because we're all like inching towards our way there. Because the last thing you need was like trying to bump into people in front of you when we're so like sardined in, into the corrals. So once you start running, it's basically just weaving in and out of, you know, crowded packs of people um, who are running and walking. So it was, it was, it was definitely crazy to start. So I remember starting my watch and I'm like, all right, here we go. You know, full of energy. And, um, I mean, overall I was still full of energy, but you know, you're in such a high when you start that it's, it's an amazing, like you're, 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 you're so happy for like I was so happy just be able to like cross that start line, like I was smiling, trying to film, you know, as many people as possible, and I was really like you know, in awe of all these people who taken this journey along with me. So, it it's definitely an experience to be in a crowd who were around people. I mean, I think for this one I heard like a good percentage of them are first time marathoners. So. You know, just sharing this experience with, you know, with new runners and, you know, seasoned runners is just, it's an amazing feeling overall. Um, all of us are starting running, exiting Dodger Stadium and heading down, you know, towards downtown Los Angeles. And um, but I think after, you know, between miles three to six is when the open spaces start to open up. And because the streets are wider, um, there's more room for people just to spread out. Um, so I ended up mostly running towards the right side of the road because that's what I'm comfortable with at that point um, when I'm running. But um, I had my stride. I was doing pretty good, um, you know, passing downtown Los Angeles, um, going up those hills. One thing, though, I know, I do know that this particular route um, has rolling hills. So when I needed to... Um, I took it pretty easy or, you know, there were moments I kind of slowed down quite a bit just to pace myself going up the hills. Going downhill was pretty much fine, um, especially downtown. I'm used to the downtown hills. Um, those were fine with me. Um, we crossed that um, definitely towards the Disney concert hall is one of my favorite parts because they have the Japanese um, drums uh, playing along. So I've always enjoyed that section quite a bit. Um, you know, past Chinatown, um, what's, what's after downtown towards Silver Lake, Echo Park. I did that chili dog person was still there again. So I saw them. I saw one guy take one, um, right next to me. So I was not brave enough to take a chili dog. Um, 
I, I didn't want to risk my stomach for that. But I did get some candy from some people and pretzels um, uh, around, um, I want to say, I want to say Silver Lake. Um, there was a group of people with bowls of orange slices. So I took one, a, a giant chunk of one and had that, which is actually great in terms of uh, fuel. And then past Silver Lake, uh, we headed towards Hollywood. I did meet up with a friend there, um, saw them waiting for me. So it was pretty awesome to see them with their cute little doggy. Um, but, you know, I wasn't expecting it, but it was really cool. I, I love seeing familiar faces on the routes. Um, after Hollywood, um, Hollywood, like before Hollywood, that you're, everyone's usually used to seeing. Uh, we actually passed by after that the, you know, Dolby Theater in that area right there with uh, all the stars, you know, on the sidewalks. Um, and it's close to, you know, the Pant Pantages Theater and all the little, you know, entertainment studios and whatnot. So we ran by there and then headed down south quite a little bit towards um, West Hollywood, that area. Um, it was around mile 13 that... I started feeling a little bit of knee pain on my left knee, surprisingly. It was usually my right knee that, was, that gave me problems um, during the training. This time around, it was my left knee. So that came out of left field in terms of, like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> please don't do this now. Um, but luckily, it didn't last too long. So I just shifted the way I was um, maneuvering my legs and feet a little bit because I tend to angle on occasion my knees I've noticed before so that's something I've been trying to work on um for the last several years but I just angled it quite a bit to keep it as straight as possible and that helped quite a bit to relieve that um that pain so I kept running and after maybe maybe 10-15 minutes it pretty much subsided after that. So um, that was something I was not ready <laughs> to have happen during my race. I mean, granted, there are, you know, medical tents along the way, but I didn't want to, you know, bow out because of that. I don't know. Maybe it's just too prideful on my part, but <laughs> I don't know. But kept going. Um, I did take a couple of walking breaks here and there when I needed to, mostly 30 seconds at most, and then went back into running after that. I didn't want to lose the momentum I was having in terms of what my pace was, so 30 seconds of walking when I needed to, and then get back into it um, with the running. Um, so I just kept that up. Um, I did see Mama J and my good friend Michelle at mile 17. Uh, I, my god kids were nearby, but I didn't get a chance to glance around, so I, I missed giving them hugs when I passed them by. So it was really cool to see them. I love, you know, it was just seeing smiling faces that you're familiar with makes it, you know, even so much better when you're already, you know, been running for so many miles and probably in physical pain at that point. So it was just seeing their faces made me happy. So that made it even better going into these, you know, last quarter of the race. So that was much appreciated. Now, remember when I said last week with the uh, power up posters and whatnot, I tried to do as much as possible this time around. So um, when I have the vlog race vlog out for this one, you'll probably see quite a bit of those. So it was really fun, you know, giving those posters a you know, high five and seeing the smiles and faces of people. So I really enjoyed it quite a bit. It's a good, it's a good fun game to do. Some of them had the, uh, the question mark boxes from the Super Mario ones. So I try to do those quite a bit when I can. But um, around mile 18, 19, around there, we reached um, Century City, which is where the finish line is. So the way it is is, we passed Century City all the way down to, you know, the west side, Brentwood, um, and kind of do a turnaround going back to Century City to finish. So mile 18, we reached Century City, and this is where the rolling hills, at least in my perspective, gets a little ridiculous. Um, 
I, the last time I did the LA Marathon, we still finished finished in Santa Monica. So it was a nice, smooth sailing um, in terms of, you know, finishing the race. But since this time around, we're finishing back in Century City, you're literally going, you know, up and down hills and then turning back and going up and down those same hills again. So it was pretty brutal, um, at least for me. It's 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 really crazy because then by that point, I was like, I'm just going to really super pace myself slower than I normally would because these hills are ridiculous. I mean, if you look at them from a distance, they may not look steep or intimidating, but they can get pretty steep. And it really does take a lot of energy just to get up those hills and then down again, and then another one right after it, and then down. So it was a bit brutal. I don't know if brutal is the right word, but at least for me, they're a bit brutal. So that really kicked my butt in terms of um, finishing, actually. So I, I, I knew at that point, I was like, there's no way I could finish doing a sub five. So I was like, you know what, whatever time I finish, it's still cool. I don't really, you know, care about time. I never really did that to begin with, but it was just cool to see if I could, you know, that could be something I can achieve. If anyone who's ran it, you know, let me know what you thought about those hills, those last six miles of hills up and down because, whew, yeah. And it was by that point I was like, okay, let's go. Let's get over this. I mean, the enthusiasm is still there, but it's not as, like, super cheery as <laughs> was when we started. You kind of, it's like you have, like, flash flashbacks of, like, or, like, thoughts in your head going, why am I doing this? Why did I sign up for this? But, no, at least for me, I, I, I kept in the forefront why I was running it, um, you know, and it is something that I have firmly said since the beginning um, that I am running it for those who can't run. And I, I did. And I wanted to finish be- for them. And it was because of them I did finish. So that was really helpful in getting me through. I remember as I was crossing mile 25, I had that right there in the forefront of my mind. And I literally was really running towards those last moments of like gas that I have left in me, like really pushing myself to keep running and just to keep going. And literally, I think the last half mile towards the finish line, I was sprinting, just going just a little further, just a little further, you can do it, just a little more because, you know, the ones you were running for would not want you to do to stop right now. There's, There's a few more feet before you can say you can relax. So I really pushed myself hard for those last moments just to cross that finish line, and I did. And it was fun, actually, to see that finish line just going right above your head, and you're going, (sighs) you take that last breath, you slow down, and you're like, okay, I did it. And for me, it's kind of like a mixed emotions always usually because I don't know how to feel. Um, and it's not in a bad way. It's mixed emotions in a very good way because you've or we've trained for so many months to build up to this moment. And then for it to be all done in just a matter of hours is like, oh my gosh, this is it. I'm done. There's a, I've accomplished what I needed to accomplish. And so it was something that I didn't fully process until really at this moment right now as I'm talking to you, you know, because it's a lot of hard work. We put ourselves through a lot physically and just to be able to look back and going, I did that. And you're like, okay, we did that. We did that. And, and that's pretty cool. And so... My time for these, this <laughs> LA Marathon, uh, let me pull it up here. So my official time is 5 hours, 45 minutes, and 9 seconds. Now, this is, you know, 
not a PB time or PR time, but you know what? I'm still happy that I got to cross that finish line, and that's all that matters to me because mainly why I ran this race, my purpose for it was to run for those who could not run. And um, to segue a little bit from that, and um, I'm happy to say that the charity fundraiser that we've had for City of Hope, um, I could not be any happier. We raised over $2,160 in grand total. And I c- it's an amazing feeling. I, I, I'm honestly speechless um, for all the support in this journey for this and just the outpouring of people who you know, wanted to participate in some way or other. Being able to l- look out there and go, I did this for you guys because you, you guys mean a lot to me. And... You know, seeing the patients there at the City of Hope at Helford Hospital. Um, you know, for Ian, who's really a lot of one of the main reasons why I ran the marathon in the first place back in 2019, and then again in 2020. And of course, he was again a source of inspiration for running this marathon in 2024 and for fundraising for City of Hope. And you know, the contributions that everyone has made for it, you know, it is going to an amazing cause. And I'm so happy that the goal we reached surpassed what I had even dreamed of, you know, being able to raise. So thank you so much to all of you for your support in this and for the amazing, just overall thank you. I mean, I, I it's hard for me to find the words to really express certain things like this sometimes because it truly does mean a lot to me. And try not to cry on camera because that last thing that's the last thing I kind of want to do. And <laughs> me ugly crying is not a pretty thing. <laughs> so um, thank you so much. I truly do appreciate it. And um, hopefully one day we'll be able to do this again. And honest, in all honesty, it's... It's sad that, uh, well, I'm sad that it's it's done, um, but I'm happy it's also done. Again, back to the mixed emotions. Um, but, you know, it, I, I'm so happy I went through this journey. I'm so happy that I was able to share it with you all and just to, you know, inspire some people to go out there and run, really, or just do whatever they need for adventures. I've... You know, for those of you who've watched my vlogs and commented and all that stuff, it truly does mean a lot. And it's appreciated. Anyways, um, but yeah. I love you guys. If you're watching this on YouTube, heart hands, heart hands. Um... But yeah, that's it. My, my marathon experience it's been an amazing journey and i will reiterate i love sharing it every single moment with you guys so hopefully i get to do this again um to share those moments with you all of course before i forget um as i look down on my desk here um i haven't showed you the bling yet for the marathon so with that i received two medals as well for sunday so the first being is the LA Double Play medal. Um, because I ran the 5K the day before, and then and also the marathon, um, I received that medal right here. So it was like a you know two for one kind of thing, I guess. And then of course, the marathon uh, medal, which I like, for some reason I love how this design is this year. It's got the, you know, clover leaf here and it's got a little attachment on the top so it's not really attached on both sides and it's got you know the little landmarks of LA around here what did we see so um and it's got the Los Angeles Marathon 26.2 finisher so right there post race I actually feel pretty good um I don't 
have too many aches and pains here and there. My feet felt great, actually. Um, I've been able to walk normally. Um, the only thing that's really sore are my quads, which is pretty much normal in terms of, you know, running long distances here and there. So far, so good. I mean, I'm just trying to be careful not to go up and down too many steps and stairs. I live on the second floor um, where I am right now. So going up and down, going to my car, having to go and run an errand, it's like... So I'm actually taking this week not to do any running whatsoever. Just mainly do some walking here and there. Maybe I'll go for a hike, just depending on how I feel. And then get back into running next week just to keep up my fitness because, you know, I built up the stamina over the months and I do want to keep at it as much as possible. So with that, we're ending here. Thank you so much for listening. Um, do follow us on YouTube if you haven't yet. Or follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts. And we'll definitely have more episodes and fun topics to talk about post-marathon and beyond. So that's, I'll see you all later. Ciao.